Hello everyone. Um, I just uh, before we start, I remember that I kind of f forgot to mention uh, just a few interesting things. Well, I find them interesting. Um, it, yeah, I do. I, I'm sorry, but I do want to talk about my setup first before we get started here. I have, of course, a Sega Saturn. It is a European Model Two Saturn. Uh, European Model 2 console, uh, whatever. Uh, I recently got a RGB SCART uh, connector for the thing. I uh, got that from some um, UK site console goods, I think. Um, I have that connected to a SCART to HDMI uh, uh, converter, I think they call it. Converter adapter, whatever you want to call it. I have that connected by HDMI to an Elgato Game Capture HD. And I have that hooked up to a high definition TV. Um, also, just, uh, uh, yeah, resolutions. Uh, let's get that out of the gate before uh, we, we get really too deep into this. Uh, this SCART um, converter, it cannot put uh, um, well, I discovered it cannot put in several resolutions, um, two of which <laughs> uh, my uh, capture software actually supports. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was very interesting, by the way. Uh, uh, I will capture game footage at 720p. Uh, the first video, the one you saw before, um, I will leave that alone, I will leave that at 720p, but this video and the others I will downscale a lot. Why, you ask? Well, you see, I do believe the Saturn has a native video output of 320 by 240 or something like that. Maybe they do some upscaling um, to smudge that out over a... Uh, PAL and TSC um, uh, monitor. Uh, I think that's 480 i or 576 or something. Um, yeah, it it would make precisely zero sense whatsoever to uh, upload at a higher resolution. It also saves bandwidth for well both YouTube and uh, the viewer. So um, yeah, it you're gonna see pixels inside of my palm, but them to the base. Now let's finally do this. Yes! Woohoo! Do I want the compatibility report or do I just want to start? I will pick the JHL loader for no reason whatsoever. I don't know why I get, why I get two loaders, but I do. Here we go. Bom, bom, bom. We have achieved an introduction, people. Smooth video, pixelated as anything you like. Let's go.
And uh, before you ask, um, that had very little to do with the actual story. I think uh, most of that uh, kind of takes place at the end, if at all. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Scenario, uh, Shiny Force 3, Scenario 1, The Titan of Aspia. Press Start button. I will press Start button. And you can see there, Translation V18. Thank you very much. Um, Legalize Freedom, let's see his username, pen name or something. This should be a familiar setup from earlier Shining Force games. Um, you have your storyteller. He's uh, currently accompanied by Faye, who is a fairy. Kind of reminds you of Gesp in uh, Shining Force... No! Ah, Creed in Shining Force 2. Haha, <laughs> derp. Um, yeah. I won't be voicing this because it doesn't matter whatsoever. Also, um, to make this game look uh, uh, not jarring on a modern high definition TV, you do need to mess around with the uh, monitor settings quite a bit. Just fair warning, I have done that, so <laughs> if I watch TV now, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I'm going to be uh, fascinated, <laughs> shall we say. Uh, now, I failed to do that before, but uh, I, again, I kind of dug out. Um, I actually did manage to copy the um, uh, external save data onto the uh, uh, system memory, so I'm hoping that I will now get a difficulty selection. And the difficulty I will try to play this game on will be difficult. Why? Um, less uh, attack boost with the enemy and they also don't get a defense boost. I did look into how the difficulties work and if I got everything... Um, well, if I understand everything correctly, that's... Uh, yeah. Uh, that, that's just re the reason. So, we will now get to name the three heroes of both Scenario 1, 2, and 3. I will use the default names. Just for no particular reason. Um, yeah. Didn't Faye explain the situation to you? Uh, blah 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 blah. Talky talky, lots of words. So, uh, it is also uh, somewhat significant that uh, the uh, three heroes here are referred to or likened to animals. Uh, Symbios here is of course the tiger. Um, this one will be known as a dragon. And we shall call, call him Medion. And uh, the third hero is a wolf. He shall be named Julian. Is this name okay? Yes. Um, for those chasing references, um, Julian is supposed to appear in Shining the Holy Ark. I don't really know much about that. Um, I didn't get that game, so... Well, yeah. Tough shit, <laughs> basically. Um, but he should be a reference to Shining the Holy Ark. Another thing about Shining the Holy Ark, uh, the major enemy of the whole Shining Force 3 story arc first appeared in Shining the Holy Ark. Um, so, Gaul, he is one of those. We'll, we'll see him um, along the line. I, I don't need to explain him very much. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, well, at least not at this point. He uh, 
appeared in uh, Shining the Holy Art, and he is the link between the two games, I would say. Uh, he is a more firm link than Julian should be considered to be. Okay... Oh, do I not get to pick difficulty? Um, sad face. Oh, the pixelated goodness. Um, yeah, if you look carefully, you may see some uh, rendering glitches here. Yes. I am playing the game on the official car, right? Ah, you see that? At the water surface there? Uh, yeah. It is not unlikely that um, emulators of today actually render the 3D components of the output just better than the official renderers uh, on the official console. I mean, yeah, it's just, um, uh, yeah. Hey, stop pinching flower ladies. Oh, hello. What are you doing there? I do hope you uh, saw him transform there. That is going to be very much relevant, very much important. And uh, here we have two part members outside the building. We will be joining them soon. Or we will, we will be joined by them soon, I guess. <laughs> As it were. Access denied, lady. Are you listening, Dantares? Oh, I hit the peak there. <laughs> you seem to be in a terrible mood, Tybalt. Just because the peace conference with the Empire isn't going well is no reason to act like an ogre. You can't blame Tybalt for that. It sure doesn't seem like the Empire is truly interested in cooperating. Remember, Tybalt, they wouldn't have invaded Baron if you had quashed the revolt of your people instead of begging the Empire for aid. Don't you think I know that? The guilt for inviting them into the Holy Land will stay with me forever. Be that as it may, as the entrance to the Holy Land of Elbasim, Baron is an important strategic point. Even without your troubles, how long could you hope to escape the Emperor's greedy eyes? That is a hard truth, Dantares. With the people in revolt, you had no other choice. There was no way to stop the Imperial invasion. As our Republic has but recently separated from the Empire, our own people do not yet understand the benefits of standing on our own. The Empire has taken advantage of that fact. We have poured our lifeblood into this, while others tear down everything we accomplish. It's unbearable. Others tear down everything? What, who are you talking about? What do you mean, who? Have you forgotten? The rabble General Varland mentioned. We have not forgotten, but there's no need to bring that subject up now. I haven't heard about this. Please continue.
How are things with you, Symbios? Are you getting used to filling in for your father, Conrad? I see. You don't look as if you are. Ah, Lord Conrad. It's a shame his health wouldn't permit him to come. It's time like this we need him the most. Are you unsatisfied with Symbios? You'd prefer General Warland, perhaps? Is that what you were implying, Tybalt? Warland wanted to be here, Tybalt, but you know as well as any of us what a bad idea that would have been. We all know Warland is a good man, but you know his temper. He's not suited for such delicate negotiations. You enlisted Antares. He wouldn't be here unless he thought Symbios could make a difference. Lord Symbios may still be young, but I see him carrying the future of the Republic on his back someday. Dot 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 dot. I believe you were telling an interesting story, weren't you, Brutus? Um, oh, you mean about... It's really not that big of a deal. Our soldiers stationed in Balsamo have reported some strange people in the area. I see. Strange people. Could you perhaps be a bit more specific? It refers to the ones General Varland mentioned. The monks of that bizarre religious sect. The ones with masks. Dot 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 dot. Um, yeah. The tradition they kind of uh, started in Shining Force 1 and 2 carries on here in that we have a mostly silent protagonist. I say mostly silent. Uh, the heroes will never have written lines in their separate scenarios, but uh, when we meet the heroes from other scenarios um, in the uh, well, in the, in the scenario we are currently playing, they will then have considerably more to say. Uh, they will then have written lines, so they are not uh, meant to be mute. Uh, I'm going to go on a go off on a little tangent here. See, um, I recently read um, while looking through a sweet good and walkthrough of all things, actually, uh, that there is a I guess they call it Ludo narrative point in using silent protagonists. Um, that w that will allow the player to uh, uh, sort of uh, draw their own conclusions in a bigger extent than we would if we would have every written line available to us. Um, that's an interesting uh, aspect. I haven't really thought about that before, but I will do so now. And my throat is really not feeling good already. Wow. General Varland reported a group of pagan monks taking up residence in Balsamo prior to the start of the peace conference. Masked pagan monks. I don't understand how a pagan cult can proliferate on this continent in the face of the holy word of Elbasim. The people have enough to worry about. They shouldn't have their minds filled with that pagan nonsense. With the recent unrest, uh, they're gaining quite a following, preaching about a coming new order. These monks sound like a bunch of cranks, but are they dangerous? These pagans, they claim they pray for peace, but what if, what if their true aim is more sinister? This sort of doomsday preaching can be heard everywhere in Baron. People are eating up these fantasies. Benetrum, you're a pessimist. There are nuts everywhere. Worry about all of them and you'll become one. If those monks are the ones I've heard about, well, I have reason to be pessimistic. Let's talk about this some other time, shall we? We came all this way to talk peace with the Empire. Anyway, we should discuss our strategies in today's conference with the Empire while we still have time. What is it? Pardon the intrusion, my lords. A messenger from Saraband is here to see you. 
I thought we still had plenty of time before the conference. That's alright. Bring him in. I'm here to escort you to today's peace conference. You're here a bit ahead of schedule, aren't you? Governor Garvin suggests a new approach given the current difficulties in the peace negotiations. Before the official conference begins, he invites both yourself and the Emperor to an informal council. We weren't informed of this. This informal council is obviously an excuse to get all the advisors out of the room. Perhaps that's not such a bad idea. Without the confusion of so many voices, the two of us might make some progress. All right, I shall go. Are you planning to go without a bodyguard? I shall ask Edmund to accompany me. But I'm the aggrieved party in this conference. Your emotions may hinder our discussion. I believe you should remain here. I would also like to ask Symbios to do something for me. Unlike us, you are not well known here. Go speak with the people of Saraban and learn what you can. Fair enough. Although Emperor Domeric and I meet today, I wouldn't expect to resolve everything right away. Besides, you are too serious, like a father. You could use some time relaxing among the people. I also need to tell Gantara something. I think an Imperial Knight Campbell is here in Saraband accompanying the youngest prince, Miriam. Campbell sounds familiar. I've heard tales of a brave knight. Not long ago, during a border skirmish, he fought brilliantly against us. You may find him somewhere in town. I'm ready. Thank you for waiting, messenger. So he is gone. So now what do we do? Nothing to do but wait. But you have a job to do, Symbios. You'd better go. And Dantaris the Knight joins the force. Um Now uh, I need to mention uh, just one thing about my controller. Uh, the one I'm currently using I, is the same one I got when I first bought the console. So uh, do the math, um, and it's about 20 years old, and <laughs> it kind of does show. I mean, for a 20 year old controller, I haven't been using it much, so. Um, well, uh, what I want to get at is sometimes I notice a slight delay between. Uh, controller input and um, yeah sprite movement this well I hope it doesn't become much of a problem and well there you go and when you search around like this you can get messages from uh, just about everything literally uh, you will not always find items, which is one of the reasons I uh, consider cutting out some uh, exploration. Please don't leave me behind. Ah, it is you, Grace. So, where is Masquerin? That little minx, she's afraid she'll be scolded and is curled up hiding somewhere. She got me in trouble in the middle of the conference. He peeked through the window. Oh, please. I beg you to forgive her. She regrets what she did. I messed up the emphasis there. Oh, well. 
Oops. Mistakes were made. Please don't ask that of me, my lord. If we let Massacre off so easily, it would not be good for her. Since Lord Symbios insists, I let her off with a warning this time. You can come out now, Masquerin. Sir Dantaris says he'll forgive you. <clears throat> I didn't mean to upset anyone. Masquerin, what am I to do with you? What is this? Flowers? Who are these for? The messengers gave them to me earlier, and presenting them to you as my way of saying I'm sorry for what happened. You think this qualifies as an apology? Would you like some too, Lord Symbios? Damn, Masquerin, I'm not finished with you! Symbios received the cut flowers. Yes, what were you saying? Oh, never mind. Due to King Benetron's generosity, we get to take in the sights of Sarmand. Let's not waste any more time. And we now have a party of four. Um, also, I'm getting a disturbingly low of... Vol uh, yeah, low volume levels, I think. So I'll just boost the uh, capture volume a little. I hope it works out alright for everyone. So while I'm looking for more items around here, um, just another note about uh, how the different scenarios are laid out. Uh, I think they did... Uh, I think they did it the absolute right way, uh, and I want to talk about that because it kind of... Oh, oh hey, there's a tre treasure chest. Neat, we want treasure chests, and it's a little difficult to get through the door. Uh, yeah, in light of Fire Emblem Fates. Oh, a potion? That's a little premature, isn't it? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that potion, that heals that heals you up to full. You do not want to use that in the early game. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, I don't think we can store it anywhere either. I don't think the game will let us do that, but... Uh, we have a headquarter that we uh, get to use for that uh, purpose later in the game, at least. It is located over this way. Okay, Natarius, will you let me store things? No. Okay, uh, now one thing that I think is really nice with this game, it is that uh, every button on the controller can be used to advance the text. That is, the two shoulder buttons, the X, Y, and Z buttons, and the A, B, and C buttons. I often use the right shoulder button to do so. Uh, my left shoulder button is not doing very well. I will say no more. <laughs> Um, hello to you. I roamed the world as a mercenary searching for a master archer and ended up here in Sarabund. I liked it so much I joined the Sarabund Guard. However, I'm thinking about moving on again. Hayward, um, well, in the same tradition that they, ha that they use in Suikoden, if someone has a character portrait and a name, they will either join your party at some point, or be a boss. Um, this is going to be our first archer, if we are lucky. Um, see, scenario... Well, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Shining Force 3 introduced gimmicks to the maps. Um, here's another one. 
garage. Um, in some maps, uh, you get uh, recruitable characters on the battlefield. They will be controlled by the AI until you talk to them with one of your own party members. I don't think you need a specific party member most of the time when you speak to them. Uh, but uh, you should be aware that if, 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 if the uh, recruitable um, partner character gets killed by enemies during the fight, they will be gone for good. Uh, most of the time I think you also only get one shot at recruiting them, so if, I mean, if you recruit uh, the character successfully uh, at the first try, well, the I think you will have, uh, I think it counts as a successful a recruitment so you will uh, get to retain that character even if you need to do the uh, uh, even if you need to do the battle again but if the character dies uh, in that first attempt when you do the map again they stay dead and here we go pixel hunt we find a large mithril uh, I should note that I am using a well walkthrough of sorts by Joe Negron. It uh, um, well, it's not very precise, so there is uh, some kind of item checklist, but it doesn't really give detailed instructions on how to get all the different things, where they are, the specific locations, and what house you need to enter. So, uh, I will be uh, bungling along pretty merrily. And as you can see, you can push some characters around. Hmm, okay. Yeah. She is the flowers, the uh, flower lady that the, uh... well, yeah. I'm sure you saw that, so we don't need to talk about that. I'm just looking for uh, items here. Um, oh yeah, about the layout of the scenarios. Uh, scenarios 1 and 2 are uh, mostly contemporary. That is, uh, um, they follow the same timeline and basically at the same time. So if you f when you fight one battle here, you will have fought well, in scenario 2 they will have fought another battle, typically. Not always the case. Uh, but generally, generally speaking, that holds true. And now I think I will enter the city proper. Uh, scenario three uh, starts sort of halfway along the story arc in a uh, story arcs in scenarios one and two uh, for uh, completely understandable reasons and the story will then end in scenario three it is not like fire emblem fates where you have basically three what if scenarios uh, so you get ah well if you play, if you play Fire Emblem, you you, you know how you, you probably know how that whole thing is set up. Um, I don't think I have <laughs> as much throat uh, speaking time uh, remaining as I probably should. Um, let's see, what is this? Okay, I'll just go and save the priest, and I think I will call it an episode. Oh, church, and here's where we save. I suppose I don't need to 
make you sit through that. Um, so, see you in the next episode.